2 Samuel 3 verse 1 Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. Kala Yahweh by Shemuel Shai. Back at you with another video. So you can see the image in front of you there. King David Negro. You understand? Uh, 1720s. And this is taken from the images of the Russian Book of Icons. And there's many images of our forefathers. Along with King David. Along with Moses. Uh, Apostle Paul. Etc. And, and the list goes on. We shall all so-called Negroes as you can see there. So before we go into this video we're going to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yehoshai by Hashem, Harakakwa Dash, double honors to all the elders and the apostles of Great Milsan sanitation to all the sincere Akim. Yes man. So rise up to the house of David. The house of David is waxing stronger and the house of Saul is waxing weaker and weaker. And we're going to bring out some precepts to back up that statement. Because it's becoming more and more evident as we can see the other alphabet camps are waxing weaker. They're not making their stand. There's a lot of things that they've compromised on. You know, the um the five are one C three. We know brothers have been breaking it down. A lot of them are have taken that, you know, to, uh, which is made it's compromised them. They can't make a stand, they can't stand on the scriptures one hundred percent. So the house of David is waxing stronger because why because they stand on the scriptures 100% and they're not compromised and then and they're always talking about the prophecies they can they make a stand on the chip they make a stand on the, the maxines a positive stand on all these stances and so that's how you can tell if they're dealing with the 100% truth they are of the house of David and if they're not dealing with a 100% truth for those of you that may be still in that they are definitely of the house of Saul and they're waxing weaker and weaker. So we're just going to some precepts and we're going to roll in the spirit, look up one and two words as well. So yes, let's bring out Zechariah 12 and 8. It says, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David and the house of David shall be as God, as an angel of the Lord before them. Yes. The house of David, man, is waxing stronger and stronger. And as we're getting closer, which I did a video yesterday on the spiritual power. You know what I mean? Um, spiritual power. Um, I went into it. The intangibility, strength, superhuman strength, in, invisibility, telekinesis. The list goes on. Invisibility, uh, astral projection. Boy, and these, we're talking about In that day shall the Lord defend the neighbors of Jerusalem And he that is feeble, we're talking about he that is feeble even now And we look forward to those days Which is not far now get, Of getting that, those superhuman bodies, spiritual power To be released from these slaves These bodies that are slave to sin Slave to corruption uh, Bonds of, the bonds of darkness you understand, like a cocoon, the, the the caterpillar, which we're described as um little caterpillars, really, to the Yoruba Shimi uh, from a caterpillar to the cocoon, from the cocoon to a butterfly, to be released from these chains of darkness, man, to to be bestowed upon us from a feeble body, among them that in that day shall the Lord be as shall the feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God. So the house of David shall be as God. As an angel of the Lord before them. Right. So as an angel. And we know the angels are powerful. Beyond measure. Out of this world. Like I said in my video yesterday. So. This brings up the point. This backs up the point I'm making. That the house of David is waxing stronger. And the house of. Not long now. Till we get released from these chains of darkness. To be bestowed with those, to be bestowed with those spiritual power for those that have been chosen, of the, of the elect. Let's bring out another one. Amos nine eleven. In that day, 
I will rise up the tabernacle of David. That is falling, yeah, because yeah, we we fell. You understand? We right now we're still under that yoke, that heavy yoke of that burden of slavery. First, it was the transatlantic slave trade. Then, you could have the Jim Crow, the or the lynching, you know, which was which was just as bad. The lynching and all the laws that the Jim Crow laws that I done a video on on that too. The um the juggernaut can't be stopped. This truth is a juggernaut, and the things that we had to overturn and overcome and come through like a juggernaut. This truth and all the opposition that we had to overcome, right? The Jim Crow laws, the transatlantic slave trade, the now the even today the slavery, the heavy yoke, the shootings are in over all around the world because we're still under the the Deuteronomy 10, 28. We're still under those curses which were coming out. So in that day, I will rise up the tabernacle of David that is falling. He's rising us. He's rising us up. Falling and closed up the breaches thereof, and I will rise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of our enemies, Edom, the prime enemy. And all of the heathen, yeah, the Goyim, all their enemies around about, which are called by my name, saith the Lord. Thus, Lord, that doeth this. So, yeah, the precept we just looked at in Zechariah, isn't it? Zechariah 12 and 8. You understand? In that day, but now, he's talking about, he's going to rise up the tab tabernacle of David that is falling. That's a perfect precept to the one we just looked at. So, you can do your own research, man, on the Russian Book of Icons, man. Our forefather, King David, like I say, all the other prophets were so-called Negroes. And they, and they will be back ruling again. Because, like I say, the house of David is waxing stronger, not weaker. But it's becoming more and more evident the house of Saul is getting weaker. Yeah. Just like we saw with Saul, when the spirit was taken off of him, he went mad literally went mad started to try and kill the real anointed which was a king which was king david threw spears at him a couple of times and he even threw a spear at his own son jonathan for supporting david and david was um so uh, jonathan the son of saul was sincere in his support of david he reckoned that david was a man of the, the most high's heart and he was dealing the most high was dealing with david so really, he sincerely had he had no choice but to support David. So Saul tried to kill him. He, he actually threw a spear at his own son Jonathan for that. So that's what happens, man. When you start, when you don't do right, you don't stand on the truth one hundred percent. And for those wolves in sheep, sheep clothing that the brothers are calling them, the, the other alphabet camps that are not doing right, we're gonna. It's, become, it's becoming more and more evident that you are the house of Saul. You're getting weaker. If you're going to make a stand on the scriptures, you've got to do it 100%, man. You understand? And, and you've muffled yourself by taking the, the 501 C3. That's a, that's a muffling. There's no there's no one in their right mind going to really want to stand on the truth half-heartedly. And if there's any Jonathans, <laughs> you understand? Because Jonathan was, um, he was a supporter of Saul, of David, rather. He was a son of Saul, his father. And, but he didn't support his own father he supported david so if there's any jonathan's among those other camps now you can make your own you can make your own assessment your own judgment and get out away from those false prophets man those wolves sheep clothing because the house of saul is waxing weaker and weaker and the house of david is waxing stronger and stronger let's look at some more precepts to back up the statement it's not an overstatement it's blatant for the sincere men of the law to see the elect. This is talking from Acts 13 and 22. And it says, when he had removed him, right, he removed Saul. When, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, a son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Which shall fulfill all my servants. Yeah. The prophet. 
they removed um they removed Saul from being king because he he went off he became wicked and he replaced him with the son of Jesse David as it says there in 23 Acts 13 and 23 now it says that this man's seed hath God according to his promise rise unto Israel a savior of Jesse which which um, from David was from the house of David was the seed of uh, Judah which Yahusha came out of you understand the line of kings man the line of rulers of the tribes so that's why he said what he said there yeah of this man's seed hath God according to his promise rise unto Israel a saviour of Yahusha yeah our saviour Yahusha he came out of the seed the line of Judah which was through the line of David King David here's another precept first Samuel 16 and 16 he says let our Lord now command our servants which are before thee and to seek out of out a man who is a cunning player on the harp and and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well yeah because like I say the soul soul went off the spirit left him he became he became delusional and he wanted to pursue David even though in his wickedness he pursued David he still he called he called to David to um to be comforted via the harp let me carry on reading it says and Saul said unto his servants provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me then answered one of the servants and said behold I have seen a son of Jesse that's David the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing a mighty villain man that's also another one of his titles a mighty villain man a man of war a prudent in matters a comely person and the Lord is with him so what, what can you say what can you really say against David you see but he still had men wicked men the house of Saul who really wanted to still kill David he says here he was a he was a Bethlehemite that is cunning in plain and a mighty villain man yeah that's another thing he was a mighty villain man that's what you call a real superhero yeah I mentioned DC superheroes the video I did the silver server and um, the man of steel done videos on uh, the Martian Manhunter but when you talk about superheroes <laughs> this is what we're talking about this is the real and which there which King Day was a, was a Negro for you that hate your own color and you hate yourself you don't like to see <laughs> your own images take a look at the Russian book of icons and our forefathers yeah that is cunning in plain and a mighty villain man he was a mighty villain man a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person this is the one of the main things and the Lord is with him why so you can be all about those other things you could be a valiant mighty man you could be prudent you can have you know a certain amount of wisdom you could be a man of war, war but with David, <laughs> David had it, all, had it all. He said, above all, he said, the Lord was with him. So that is why. And if the Lord is with us now, with 100% truth, <laughs> that's why I say, yes, the house of David is waxing stronger and the house of Saul is waxing weaker and weaker. Because we're standing on truth. Yes, we're standing on truth, which is 100% truth from the scriptures. And that's what makes you stronger. Yeah, we're going to look up the word, man. Strong. And we're going to look up some of the... As a matter of fact, let's look it up now. Check out the word. Strong. First, we're going to look at... Just this basic... We're going to Google this word, yeah? Strong. Cause we know these words you know but you see there's there's meaning there's there's vibrations with words man the house of david was waxing stronger and stronger let's check, check this out powerful yeah the house of david was powerful you know that's that's we we know that word there we're not we're not really talking about the muscular side of things we're talking about the spiritual side of things really well built 
but the, the house of David was well built. <laughs> you understand? It had, it had foundation, right? Sturdy, sturdy, robust. We know these words, but we're thinking on the spiritual. But also, David was a mighty man uh, as well. He was a he was a mighty man of valor. He was a carnal mighty man of valor, but most of all, the Lord was with him. So that makes him, you know, makes him virtually invincible. Right. Well built, indestructible. Yeah, that makes him indestructible. He was a man of valor, a prudent man. He had wisdom. He was a man of justice, and the Lord was with him. Yeah, let's check out another word here. And don't we want that? Don't we want to be like our... A uh, man after the Mona, Most High's own heart, like David. We want to be like our big brother, which I did. I did a video on King David was our big brother, a mighty man of valor. I did that video, you know. And likewise, we want to be like King David, our big brother. Just look at this other word here. He's our real so-called superhero, our real role model. There's so many role models today, you know, representing negativity. These are the kind of role models that we we want to push to the for the to the forefront. Strength, the quality or state of being physically strong. People go to the gym and push weights, and you know, it, it increases your muscle mass and increases your strength, your sturdiness. If you eat well too, which is all right. Is all right, but we're talking on the spiritual, and like I say, with those spiritual bodies, those spiritual extraterrestrial bodies, <laughs> don't matter how much weight you are and push, man, don't matter, ain't gonna make no difference. When the most I give us these new bodies, <laughs> we're gonna be all go, all go, non stop go. When it comes to justice, non stop go. When it comes to power, non stop go. Like I say, out of this world power. Most of all, the most are going to be with us, like King David. That's the most important thing. Power, brawn, robustness, firmness, toughness. Right? We got, we got that. We got, we got enough out of that. We looked at strength. We looked at strong. But now we're going to look at the um, the etymology of the word here. Strength. Now it kind of, it kind of pins it down a bit more with the etymology. Strength. Old English strength. Uh, I'm gonna butcher that word. So, uh, stringo, <laughs> bodily power. You can apply that physically and spiritually. Bodily power, force, vigor, firmness, fort fortitude. David had all these things. He had it physically and spiritually. Firmness, fortitude, manhood. You can apply this spiritually and physically. Because those spiritual bodies are going to be physically, carnally strong and physically strong and me mentally strong, psychologically strong, <laughs> um, spiritually strong, everything strong, in, strong on every level, you understand, in a nutshell. Strength, boy, tight, narrow. <laughs> So where's the where's the key root the, the 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 root word here really the one I want is so from pi strength tight narrow C string I think we've got enough out of that really so bodily power force vigor firmness fortified manhood violence violence you know in in etymology of the word strength moral resistance. You know, we know, when a man stands on something, they say he's standing firm, you know, he's standing strong, he ain't budging. So when you believe in something, they say you're strong, you, you know, you ain't budging. So, yeah, man, we looked at that word there. I think we, we got enough out of that. Our, the, the house of David is waxing stronger and stronger than the house of Saul. On, on a week, I could do another video on the house of Saul about how weak it how weak you are and how more weak you get in a but if I do it in this one it might be dragged out into a longer video we're just going to deal with the house of David because we see what's happening with the house of Saul you know that they've muzzled themselves man the 501c3 you've muzzled yourself you you know you put kryptonite in your you know you, you've actually put kryptonite in your own 
in your own food you know but for those of us that like the hundred percent the whole grain the one hundred percent you see in, in anything if you get the if you get the whole whole grain in anything it's going to be better for you it's going to give you more strength the whole grain rice the whole grain um, oats the whole grain flour the whole grain 100% of everything is always better for you so that's what we want we want the whole grain truth we don't want no diluted water dan 501c3 <laughs> junk food we want the whole grain so that's why we're going to be stronger you understand you can think of it carnally on a carnal level on a physical level and you can think of it on a spiritual level too it's always better for you to get the 100% whole grain and that's what we're talking about that's my um, physician hat on it there for for a minute right so let's bring out these precepts we just look, looked at the word strong the house of D david is waxing stronger and stronger let's bring this one out another reason why the house of david continue to grow strong and and we're back here today and we're of that number, Lord willing, we are the hopeful elect of the house of David. Second Samuel 8 and 6 says, Then David put Gerizians in Syria and Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David, and brought gifts. See, even they recognize you can't mess with David. You can't ramp with this man, yeah, King David. This man, you can't ramp with him. The most has with him, as he goes on to say. And the Lord preserved David wheresoever he went. And he put Gerizians, jump down to 14, of 2 Samuel and 8. And he put Gerizians in Edom for, throughout all Edom. But he, but he, but he, Gerizians, and all the day of Edom. Let me read that again. Let me take my time. And he put Gerizians in Edom throughout all Edom. Put he Gerizians. And all they of Edom became servants, David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wheresoever he went. Again, you see, that's what happens, you see, when you've got the Most High's blessing. The Most High preserve you everywhere you go. That's why we want to be of the house of David and not of the house of Saul. And David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice. So if you have a king, it's the most beautiful thing when you have a king that is just, man. He's ruling with you and you can and you just know it. He's ruling with you his balance. Everybody likes a balanced person, a balanced king. He ruled with judgment and justice. Another word for justice could be balance. You understand the scales of justice when they're in the middle and they're balanced and they're weighed right. Don't we if we went in front of a judge, don't we want to be judged with balance, with justice and judgment? We all do. So that's why we uh, we reverence King David and we um, we reverence Yehoah, Yehoah Shai, and we reverence Yehoah, why Yehoah Shai, you know, all the righteous kings that ruled, yeah, because they rule with judgment and justice, and unto all his people, because everybody wants to be ruled in righteousness and justice, fairly, everybody wants to be dealt with in a fair and just balanced way, so we reverence our kings, man. The most of all, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah, Kala Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. So I hit the precepts I wanted to hit. Let's hit this to end it off. First Samuel and thirty. And David acquired at the Lord, saying, "Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them?" And he answered, and he and he answered him, "Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail." recover all yeah because he always asked of the most high he wasn't presumptuous which he learned that from a young age he said he didn't want to be presumptuous that's in um psalms psalms um 19 and 14 he spoke about not to be presumptuous you see he learned that as he became a wise king and he recognized that he says and david acquired at the lord saying shall i pursue after this troop so you ask a question, I always say this too, when you ask a question, you've got to wait for the answers. He says, shall I overtake them? And that's another question. And he answered, Yehoshua answered, he said, pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them 
and without fail recover them you see that's waiting waiting patiently that's how you have the most high blessing when you wait on the most high so if you can, if you ask a question you have to wait for the answer and then once you pursued the most high said pursue them he said so you shall surely overtake them without fail you will recover all so that's how he had the necks of his enemies he had them in derision so i think the point is made akim the house of david we looked it we looked at it we started with it we're going to read it and end off with this is going to be the last one second samuel 3 and 1 it says now there was long war between the house of saul and the house of david but david waxed stronger and stronger and the house of saul waxed weaker and weaker Kala Yehovah Bashim Yoshai to what it is about Yehovah Bashim Yoshai for giving me the spirit to do this video. We looked up the word, the etymology of the word, strength and strong and stronger. And we are Lord willing, we're of the house of David, and we're getting waxing stronger and stronger. And it's becoming more and more evident who the house of David is. I want to say Shalom to all the sincere Akim, keep pushing, rise up to the house of David and shall luck run be upon all the enemy and everything they've done to us may it fall upon their own head we are